Okay, so today we will continue talking about topologies. Uh, last time we uh, got the ball rolling by talking about what I call the um, uh, CK compact open topology. Okay, so these are topologies for spaces of mappings. And we're going to work with mappings first and then um, sections of vector bundles. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so last time we did the uh, finitely differentiable case. Uh, uh, now we will do the uh, smooth case. Okay. Um, and the smooth case follows uh, uh, more or less uh, directly um, from the uh, finitely differentiable case. But before I start talking about all of that, there's a little diversion and I'll just make it very brief because we'll be encountering these ideas a lot, so I just want to mention it and make sure that we understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, so the diversion is going to be about uh, um, initial and final topologies. These are going to come up sort of all over the place in descriptions of, of various topologies. So first, let's look at uh, uh, initial topologies. Okay, so the situation here is, so we'll do these definitions in a sort of general way, uh, because they make sense in, in, in that way. So we're going to let uh, T um, and uh, some family um, S sub A uh, be uh, topological spaces. Uh, actually, sorry. Um, uh, so T uh, is just going to here be a set, and we're going to put a topology on that. Uh, so let T be uh, a set, okay? And these are topological spaces. And we're going to have some mappings, okay? And so uh, the topology here we're talking about is an initial topology. So all of our mappings are going to go from T uh, uh, into the uh, S sub A's. And these are you know, not continuous because T doesn't have a topology yet. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so then, um, uh, there is a, um, and there's essentially a 50% chance that I'll get this right, but I think it's coarsest. Do you remember if it is? It's coarsest or the, yeah, okay. So, uh, coarsest topology on T such that uh, the mapping psi A, all of them are continuous. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is going to be uh, the initial topology on T uh, with respect to these mappings. All right, and then you won't be surprised. And there's an explicit uh, description of what the open sets in this topology are, and if my uh, memory serves me correctly. Um, <clears throat> you take open sets here, uh, take their pre-images under these mappings, um, and those form a sub-base for the initial topology. Okay. All right, so final, everything basically the arrows get reversed. Except the mappings now go um, into uh, T. <clears throat> uh, so okay. So the 
Now you have a, a topology, which is the um, finest topology, such that these mappings are continuous. sets in this topology, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, um, uh, right, so they're the sets uh, uh, here whose pre-images um, under all of these mappings are open. Okay, so you take the subsets here, take the pre-images here. Um, if, if that subset here has the property that all of its pre-images are open under all these fees, those are your open sets. Okay. All right, so um, we're going to use uh, these constructions um, uh, in a whole bunch of ways uh, throughout all of our discussions of, of topologies, okay? And we'll do so right off the bat by um, um, putting, <clears throat> by talking about infinite jets and by talking about topologies on spaces of infinite jets, okay? So we will start uh, with um, sections of vector bundles because we're going to do this for mappings using the constructions with sections of vector bundles. Jet bundle of this guy. We, we've already defined the finite jet bundles. <coughs> okay, so. Alright, so what's this going to be? Um, so uh, maybe let's define it at a point x in M. Okay, so we're going to define the infinite jets at a point x. So these are going to be um, uh, mappings, which I'll just write as phi, uh, from the positive integers into uh, the union of the all these finite order jets at E. <clears throat> Okay, and it has to have some property that have to um, uh, nest in the appropriate way uh, relative to the ordering on Z. So you should have uh, the property that um, pi uh, KL, all right, so we defined this thing when we talked about infinite jets. This is the projection from the uh, kth uh, jet bundle to the lth jet bundle. So here L is less than or equal to K. So pi KL of uh, phi K, equal to phi L. Okay? <clears throat> so this is the um, projective limit um, uh, of these things. And this, this is a projective limit in you know, various categories. Let's just think about the category of sets. Okay? It's also in the category of vector spaces. Um, and we'll also be thinking about um, topological spaces as well. Okay? So that's the infinite jet bundle. Okay? So then you have Projections, pi infinity k from uh, j infinity e. Okay, so j infinity e, you simply do the obvious thing. You take the disjoint union over all x's in M of j infinity x. Okay, like that. All right. So now we're in this story here, right? So we have j infinity and all the jk's, and so there's um, these guys. We put, you know, these are manifolds, 
so they have topologies and and we even given uh, a metric on M and a fiber metric on E we put a natural um, metric on on the total space of the vector bundle All right so these are even metric spaces <clears throat> okay with you know sort of explicit metrics okay but it doesn't matter uh, all we really care about is putting um, the initial topology on there For example, all right, so um, first thing is uh, these are metric spaces, these are a countable number of mappings like this, so it turns out that that implies that this space is metrizable, okay, um, and it's the usual construction uh, if you have a countable collection of metrics, you define, and I may get this formula not quite exactly right, but I don't really care. D, let's say you have a finite number of metrics, dk, I think the construction looks something like this. Oh, sorry, I think it's dk over 1 plus dk times 2 to the minus k. Let's say it again. I think it's dk over 1 plus dk, and then the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. Okay, 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 okay good. Deal. Thanks. Uh, like that? So the numerator is to the minus k. Is oh, so this should be 2 to the k. To the k. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, of course, because it has to scale. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so if you're given a countable number of metrics, you induce a metric like that. Okay, um, and so therefore we have a, a, a natural. So J infinity is metrizable. I don't know that we really care so much about that specific metric, but it's metrizable. <clears throat> and in particular, uh, um, this as a topological space satisfies all of the requirements uh, to define um, the compact open topology in a nice way here as being the topology of uniform convergence on compact sets. Okay, so this guy has enough structure so that the compact open topology for mappings with this as um, uh, as domain or as codomain um, um, uh, will have an, the, the usual nice description in terms of uniform convergence. Okay, and we're going to use that to define the C infinity compact open topology. Okay, good. So, um, So we, this goes, maybe we don't all remember uh, the definition of the CK compact open topology last time, but it looks like this, except with you know, infinity replaced with K. So the idea is you have this mapping, J infinity, <clears throat> which maps the set of smooth mappings um, uh, from M into N into the set of continuous mappings from M into J infinity. Oh, gack, I'm really sorry. Um, this is only for vector bundles. Um, I need to do this for, uh, um, for mappings as well. Um, the definition is uh, more or less the same. Okay, I apologize. Um, um, so, okay, so it's as a set, but I want to say something more about it about the structure of this. Um, so. Alright, and it, it, with the same property here. So pi KL of K pi, uh, sorry, P of L. Okay, so um, the only thing I wanted to mention here <clears throat> was remember that um, uh, K-Jets had this interpretation as um, algebra homomorphisms between uh, 
these two spaces, right? So these are the k jets of functions that vanish uh, at y, and this is the k jets of functions that vanish at x, okay? And this space has a natural identification as the uh, algebra homomorphisms between these two spaces. And um, so now uh, you can do this construction and you can replace the K with an infinity, okay? By considering the vector bundle, the trivial vector bundle um, M cross R, okay? Or M cross C if you want to talk about complex holomorphic functions. Okay, and then this direct limit um, actually makes sense um, and has exactly the same definition as a set in the um, in the calc in the category of um, uh, uh, here it, you get the limit is in the category of um, R algebras or C algebras. Okay, and this is the homomorphisms from the um, R algebra here to this R algebra. Okay, so all of the algebraic structure of infinite jets is preserved by the uh, um, by the projective limit. Okay, <clears throat> so now I can write this. Okay. All right. Um, so this just takes, of course, um, a mapping phi to its infinite jet, of course. All right. Um, and the topology on here, okay, so now we have a topology here. Right, this is um, a metrizable space. This is a metrizable space. Um, we're going to use the compact open topology here. So this, for these nice spaces that we have here, this is going to be the topology of uniform convergence on compact sets. Okay. Um, so we're using the compact open topology here, and then we demand that the topology here uh, be such that um, uh, this mapping is a, a homeomorphism onto its image. So you have to check injectivity of that. Which 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 follows relatively easily. <clears throat> okay, so that's the smooth compact open topology, just a natural adaptation of the uh, um, CK compact open topology that we talked about last time. So. Um, I'm going to be listing multiple alternate characterizations of all of these topologies. Um, and let me start now by giving you, and, and I won't prove this, 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 this is a proof that's easy, okay? It's a homework problem. Um, so uh, let me give an alternative characterization of the smooth compact open topology. So first we note that we have natural embeddings of C infinity into CK, just inclusion. Okay, and now, so now we're in the setup here uh, to use initial topologies, right? Because we have this family of mappings. We have the CK compact open topologies here, okay? And so the, topolo the, the initial topology here is the same as the uh, C infinity compact open topology. because a lot of things that you do with C infinity, you do by just doing it for fixed K and then um, letting K be arbitrary. All right. Okay, so that's the smooth compact open topology. Now, let me talk about Lipschitz things. Uh, there's two reasons I want to do this. One is um, because we're going to be talking about vector fields at some point, um, and what we want to just make absolutely explicit is that uh, the um, 
conditions for the standard Cartier-Dori uniqueness and existence and uniqueness theorem of differential equations is a special case of a very general construction that we're going to be applying for uh, uh, time-varying vector fields. Okay, so I want, and, and the standard theorem has a Lipschitz condition, so I really want to include that just, just so I can say, look, the, the theorem that's in every ODE textbook really, really is just a special case of this general theorem. Okay, so that's one reason I want to do that. The other reason I want to do that is Rob's been talking about Lipschitz mappings all the time, so let's, let's sort of see how a tiny bit of that fits into the framework that we're talking about. All right. <laughs> Okay, so um, the setting here, of course, is, is, is metric spaces, uh, which we have lots of. Okay, so the different font denotes that these are not manifolds, not necessarily manifolds. Okay. Um, the definitions just we know we all know what they are I guess here but just for completeness and, and also because I want to talk about locally Lipschitz things and so locally Lipschitz is not sort of completely standard A metric on uh, M and a metric on N. And I'll denote these unsurprisingly like that. Okay, so um, I wrote this in the wrong order. That's okay. Lipschitz. <clears throat> okay, so if um, for every X in M there exists a neighborhood. U sub x of x such that D restricted to U sub x is Lipschitz. And that's the usual definition of locally anything. The following fact uh, is um, will sort of be lurking in the background. So if uh, M is locally compact, okay, so this excludes lots of um, examples from functional analysis, but includes manifolds, and that's really what we care about here. And so possibly we want to use bounded or something here when we talk about um, infinite dimensional things. All right. <clears throat> um, so if M is locally compact, then a mapping phi uh, from M to N is locally Lipschitz, if and only if. Um, uh, phi restricted to k is Lipschitz for every compact set k. Okay, and 
that's an elementary argument using the definition of compactness. <clears throat> okay, um, so we want not just to have these concepts of uh, Lipschitz, but we want to be able to put topologies on spaces of Lip Lipschitz mappings, okay? Um, and so we'll do that uh, in a particular way. Um, okay. <clears throat> so we're going to define normy type things for uh, uh, for spaces of Lipschitz mappings. Okay. Um, so the. To do that, we're going to introduce these, these constructions. This is the funny word um, that I had never heard until I started reading about Lipschitz mappings. This is the dilatation, not the dilation, the dilatation. Um, This as uh, capital DIL. Um, so this is the basically the smallest Lipschitz constant. if and only if dill of uh, phi is finite. All right, and then there's a local version of that. <clears throat> All right, so the local version reads uh, uh, like this. Um, is not going to be uh, um, just a single number. This, um, and so this is really uh, at x in m, okay? All right, so what you do, so we're after working this for locally Lipschitz things, and so you take the, um, uh, uh, in femum over, uh, you do the dilatation over, and then you take the infimum uh, over uh, neighborhoods of x. Okay? So this is in of uh, phi, uh, sorry, big dill of phi, okay, restricted to ux, okay? And you run this over the set of relatively compact neighborhoods of, uh, of X. Okay, so we're really kind of using, uh, this makes, so, so if M is locally compact, um, uh, then this number will be finite for every x, okay? Not corresponding to this fact, because if it's locally compact, there will be a relatively compact neighborhood, okay? All right, so the, uh, the local dilatation, unlike the dilatation, is a function. Okay, so we want to try to use these to define topologies in some way, all right? Um, there's probably many ways to do this. Here's one. <clears throat> Okay. 
So what we're going to do um, is for a metric space, what we will do is we will embed the metric space in its uh, uh, space of um, uh, bounded continuous functions. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be a mapping. Uh, the mapping I'm going to write is little psi. Okay. So this is going to be um, little psi. It's going to depend on m. So m is a metric space, and it's going to depend on a there's a there's a dependence here on a on a base point x naught. Okay. So this is going to be a mapping from uh, our metric space m into the continuous bounded functions on M. Okay? And what's this mapping going to be? <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be psi M X naught of, okay, so it's going to take a point um, in M, okay? All right? So the result is going to be a function all right, so this thing is going to be evaluated, all right, and it's this. All right. All right, so this uh, um, uh, is an isometry. Okay, this is not difficult to prove. I'm, I'm not proving anything in, in these lectures, more or less. Um, but it's not trivial, but it's not difficult either. If you played with it for a while, you could. The isometry part is the, is the you know, it's easy to show it's injective. The isometry part is the hard part. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, what this does then, okay, and these kinds of results about embedding your uh, manifold into, or manifold metric space in this case, um, uh, into some space of functions is uh, a common theme. Um, you know, uh, for example, in algebraic geometry, all right? But you can do this in an even general setting of metric space. And there's lots of embeddings like this, in fact, okay? Uh, but this is one, and all we really care about is one. All right, so um, let's, uh, uh, look at this in a, in a particular case. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so, um, okay, so let's uh, let M and N be metric spaces again. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so what I what I want to do uh, uh, first is I want to um, uh, think of mappings from M into N, okay? And then what I will do is I will embed N into uh, this Bonnock space, okay? And so what I really uh, can start out thinking about. Uh, um, and, beca and because the mapping, if mappings from M into N are Lipschitz or locally Lipschitz, the mappings into the induced Bonnock space will also be uh, uh, Lipschitz or locally Lipschitz. And so uh, you can first start talking about um, uh, mappings into Bonnock space. Okay, so let me write down the general path here. Okay, so you have a mapping like this, and this is going to be a capital Psi. This is going to be a mapping depending on M and N and a point Y0 in N. So this is going to be a mapping from M into the continuous bounded functions on N. Okay, and what's it going to be? Well, I'm simply going to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, that's not, oh, I, yeah. sorry, sorry, I don't want that. I sort of want that, but not quite that. What I want is I want the mappings from um, uh, the Lipschitz mappings from M into N uh, into uh, the Lipschitz mappings from M into this Bonnock space, uh, C0 bounded of 
n, like so. And what's this mapping going to be? It's going to take a mapping phi here. Okay, and then it's going to do um, <clears throat> just what I said. So it's going to take phi, which is going to be a map from m into n, and then it's going to have this embedding from uh, n into the bounded functions on n. So it's really just this. Right? So it's uh, small psi uh, n y0 okay, composed with phi. Does that make sense? Okay. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just taking, this is the map that takes the mapping from here into here and gives you a Bonnock space valued, um, well, um, not a Bonnock space valued, yeah, a Bonnock space valued mapping on M, okay? All right, and if it's Lipschitz here, it's Lipschitz here because of the fact that that mapping is an isometry, all right? So the point is, is that we can then restrict <coughs> looking at um, Bonnock space value functions on metric spaces. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's and, and uh, um, all right, so, so I, mean, I won't state this as a formal theorem, it's relatively straightforward. Okay? So let uh, uh, M be a metric space. And there's really no reason for this to be a bottom space, it could just be a norm space. And let E be a norm space. Okay, so then we have, we still have these two constructions. Um, for a Lipschitz mapping, right, we have the dilatation and the local dilatation. Okay, we can still define those things. <coughs> okay, um, so then, uh, dil phi, uh, so actually I should say it this way. So dil um, is a semi norm on the set of Lipschitz mappings uh, from M into E. Okay, so this, this defines a semi-norm. Um, okay, so pop quiz, why is it not a norm? Constant. That's right, exactly. Yeah, constant mappings will have uh, norm zero, but not necessarily be zero. Okay, so this doesn't define um, a particularly nice topology on here. However, when you combine it with the C0 topology, it's compact open topology, say, um, it gives you a nice topology, but it needs sort of two, two things to define it. The, the Lipschitzness has to be preserved by the dilatation, and then you need something else to control kind of the values of the function. Okay? All right. All right, so also. Okay, so uh, if uh, M is locally compact, okay, then you get a semi-norm on the space of locally Lipschitz functions. Okay, you get uh, this thing. Okay, so um, uh, so it's going to be a soup. Okay, and what I do is I take the uh, uh, dilatation okay, of uh, phi. Okay, so I have a, lip, a locally Lipschitz, and so I'll be write, writing the local Lipschitz since after I give this definition. Okay, so if we're talking about a locally Lipschitz mapping phi, I'm going to take its local dilatation at, value, at, at a point x, and I'm going to soup that over um, compact sets k. So this is a semi-norm on 
this space. So when I sorry, so this is Lifshitz mappings from M into E. When I write it like this, just because I want to unify the notation of CK, C infinity, uh, C omega, and C hall for holomorphic, I want to include locally Lipschitz in that um, notation. So I write it as C lip like that. So that means locally Lipschitz functions, not Lipschitz functions. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So here for this event here, are yeah. you making any special assumptions on M to make sure that psi of x is actually a bounded continuous function? Uh, um, just to make sure that. We'll have um, if you take x equals x zero there, you just get minus the m of y x zero, right? Uh, of x zero would be just a distance function. Oh, that, let me let me let me think. Um, um, yeah, it seems like it shouldn't be bounded, right? It yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You're, you're, maybe you're right, um, but I have to. Um, let, let me think. Yeah, I'm not sure. You're, you're probably you have to be right, but I'm not sure exactly what it is right now. I, I don't think it's as strong as compact. But let, let me. But maybe you're scaling the metric to be to zero. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe exactly. That's right. The, the that's right. The metric may have to be bounded, which you can always do without loss of generality. But yeah, that's a good point. I actually, I'll, I'll, I'll check on that. And if you remind me, if you don't remind me, I will not <laughs> say anything about it next time. But if you remind me, I will. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's right. So, so uh, yeah, in the worst case scenario, without loss of generality, the metric can be bounded. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I not noticed that. Thank you. Okay. Um, good. So, so this defines a uh, a semi norm on on this space of locally Lipschitz mappings, a uh, Bonnock space value map, or norm vector space value mappings. Okay. Uh, and then. <clears throat> Um, uh, you can just use uh, uh, this induced mapping uh, to give you um, um, uh, uh, semi-metrics on the space of Lipschitz mappings. Okay. So then we have a we're only going to be interested here in the local Lipschitz case, and basically I carry along the Lipschitz case, um, uh, you know, essentially. You know, because it's convenient to have it just to define what's going on in the local Lipschitz case. Right? But we're going to only really be interested in local Lipschitz in this here. Okay, so we have a semi norm. Um, so not a semi norm, <clears throat> it's a semi metric. Okay, on C lip and, and oh, and so here. Uh, of course, K is compact. Okay, so in that definition there. Okay. All right, so it's the semi normal weight is P lip. Uh, 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 sorry, the semi metric. And so therefore, I won't write it as P, I'll write it as D. Um, okay. And it's defined in the more or less obvious way. Okay, so you take two locally Lipschitz mappings, phi and psi, um, okay, and you go. All right, so you hit it, hit there. Um, uh, you hit phi and psi with this guy. So now it takes values in a vector space, and you and then you can subtract them, and then you take the uh, um, uh, the local dilatation of that. Okay, so let's see if I can write that down without making a mistake. So the local dilatation of Okay, so it's going to be uh, psi m n y naught of p. Okay, so that's now going to be a Bonnock space value mapping. Okay, too many psi's going on, but that's the least of our worries. All right, and so that makes sense. Evaluate it at x, and then run x over k. Does that make sense? It doesn't sign the paper. Oh, yeah, I said that's the least of our worries. <laughs> OK. All right, so this gives us a semi metric on here. Um, and uh, if 
we uh, define the semi-metric. Okay. Um, D. Let me call it D zero. Oh, and this 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 I should really make it clear. This D uh, depends on K. As will this one. All right. So this is going to be the one that you would kind of expect to see with uh, just continuous functions. Okay. So this is just going to be. Um, uh, Okay, so I'm just going to go with d n of d of x sine of x x and k like that. Okay, so this will give me a semi-metric, and it's the it's a per this semi-metric will define the uh, compact open topology on the space of continuous mappings. Okay. But now I'm interested in Lipschitz mapping, so I'm going to combine this one for continuous mappings with this semi-metric uh, for uh, uh, Lipschitz mappings, okay. and that will define uh, a topology on the space of locally Lipschitz mappings. Okay. So together, okay, these two semi-metrics, DLIP, And D zero define a topology for space C lip of M N locally. Richard's mappings. <clears throat> All right, and this topology has nice properties when M and N have nice properties. All right, and so, you know, certainly if M and N are manifolds, um, then there'll be some nice uh, properties of that topology. Okay, so if M and N are nice, Kind of suppose that whenever I'm talking about manifold, um, unless I say otherwise explicitly, that's what I'm going to mean. Okay. Uh, then this topology is Hausdorff. Uh, we need to kind of Romanian. Say again. Romanian. No. Okay. Oh, I mean, um, if they have those properties, then it has a Romanian. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Quick fit. Yeah. yeah. All right, so um, if the manifolds are like this, then this apology is Hausdorff, it's metrizable. Complete. Okay. All right, so that's the Lipschitz case. Lipschitz case is. It is, well, it's not the hardest, but it takes the most development, um, and it's really not part of the standard corpus, so uh, it takes a little while. So in, in, in that sense, it was the hardest one to talk about. All right, and so, um, <coughs> oh, the other thing is um, there's some dependences here. Um, that uh, I lost with this piece of notation here, but it's right here, right? Um, this topology does not depend on the choice of y0. Okay, so you have to show that, but it, it doesn't. So I don't know how to complete this. I'm not sure, is it all for real kind of thing, or? Uh, well, Lipschitz though, right? Um, I mean, it's, you're talking about Lipschitz mappings. 
Right, so this is spaces of mappings, yeah? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. So not M and M. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so, um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that, that these constructions are independent of the choice of that point Y0. Okay, and you needed that point in the uh, uh, Kurtowski embedding theorem. All right, so, but it doesn't depend on that choice. You know, the, the metrics themselves, or the Lipschitz metric, DLIP, that certainly depends on Y0, but the topology it defines does not. Okay? So the above defines the uh, CLIP, compact open topology. using that font, um, those are manifolds. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> okay, good. So that's the Lipschitz case. Um, uh, and similarly... I'm sorry, is yes. there any difference between this CLIP and these lips? Yes, this is locally Lipschitz. Those are Lipschitz. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. Similarly, um, the C, M, uh, let me get the right K since I've been using K. Okay. So I have the K plus lip compact open topology. Okay. So this is going to be now for the space of mappings that are K times continuously differentiable and whose Kth derivative is Lipschitz. Okay. had previously used that notation for that space. Okay, so these are CK mappings from N to N whose Kth derivatives, and, and if I say Lipschitz, I do not mean from, from here on in. If you use me, hear me use the word Lipschitz, I mean locally Lipschitz, okay? I will slip and use just Lipschitz, all right? So these are uh, K times continuously differentiable mappings whose Kth derivative is locally Lipschitz, okay? All right, so this is basically a combination of the CK topology and the CLIP topology. Okay, so I have this mapping that I already defined. That. Okay, so if I take a CK plus lip mapping and I differentiate it K times, I get a C lip mapping into the Kth jet bundle. All right, <clears throat> okay. And we require, and so now, all right, this is the C lip topology, just like I'm talking about here, okay. You know, manifold, manifold, all right, so that all makes sense. And I just ask that this be a homeomorphism onto its image. So that, that's the Lipschitz case dealt with. All right. Okay, so now um, now we'll look at the holomorphic case, and where I personally am not per se interested in the holomorphic case, it, it, it's quite easy as we'll see, um, but we are going to use it to define what will be of interest to me, and that's the, the analytic topology, okay? All right, so here's how this goes. Um, it, it's, it's, it's elementary. Okay. 
So I have holomorphic manifolds, M and N, okay? And I have holomorphic mappings um, uh, from M into N, okay? That set of mappings can be pretty small, okay? That doesn't concern us so much right now. So you simply use the compact open topology, right? And so this is the miracle of holomorphic, right? Um, um, so I haven't said much about the topological properties of, you know, I can make that definition always, right? Because holomorphic functions are continuous. Um, whether that topology has any nice properties, that's the miracle of holomorphicity. Um, so, you know, completeness, for example, of this space with this topology um, is a result of the fact uh, of the Cauchy estimates for derivatives um, of uh, uh, holomorphic functions, okay? You can make the, so, so it's a coherent definition the way it is, but that it's actually nice uh, really is where holomorphic comes in. Right. So this is, I guess, a result of the fact that uniform limits are compact and the homomorphic function are homomorphic. Yeah, right? that's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and really that's just a local, you know, about a point, there's like cuboid or something, right? That's how you, and then the Cauchy estimates all the time, you're good. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so that's it. It's done. So again, when this is all, when the, when the dust is finally settled, I'll give you some properties of all of these topologies. But for now, we just want to get the definitions out. All right. All right, so the real analytic topology is the kind of the hardest one. I'm going to give you two, uh, uh, two, defini two definitions of that. Yeah. Uh, so how do you, how do you find a metric for the space? Uh, well, again, yeah, so, so before I get, uh, were you here when I wrote down the formula, if you have a countable number of metrics? So if you have a countable number of metrics, semi-metrics on space, that gives you a semi-metric by, by, you know, this construction. It will be. Right, yeah, okay. Um, uh, I have two. So it's that construction. But you did. Or even compact it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's still only. It's not. A, um, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you for, for bringing that up. So that does it for each compact set. So you um, now, uh, uh, if your spaces are nice. So, for example, second countable, right? Then you can find a countable compact exhaustion, right? So, so then you choose a set of KJs that, as you take their union, grow to in, uh, uh, encompass the space, right? Now you have a countable number. Yeah, so you do that for a countable number of KJs. Yeah, okay, yeah, thanks. That, that kind of construction uh, will come up in um, other things that I, I, I will be getting to that uh, uh, as alternative descriptions of all of these topologies um, subsequently. So for every local compact space. That's right, so really our spaces M and N here will always, in our constructions, be manifolds. Yeah, so that, that the local compactness isn't a problem. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, so the real analytic topology. Okay. So the first thing. Um, so this is where things are going to get a little interesting. And in fact, I'm going to make some um, assertions that seem like they ought to be true, but I will point out that they uh, have not been proved. All right. So I'll, I'll try to be careful about um, saying things that I um, know to be proved and things that are almost certainly true but not proven. Okay. All right, so the first construction we're going to make is this. So we're going to let M be a real analytic manifold. All right, so we're going to be using the holomorphic topology in various ways. So to do that, um, uh, the first thing that you need to do uh, uh, is you need to um, uh, extend M uh, uh, to be embedded inside a, uh, a holomorphic manifold, okay? All right, so, um, so we have um, by, uh, um, okay, a theorem of uh, uh, 
uh, Bruja and Whitney in 1958. So this is one of those results that you believe ought to be true, okay? Um, but you still have to prove it, and it's just a tedious proof of constructing a, a holomorphic manifold from a real analytic manifold. So you have an atlas for the real analytic manifold. You know, atlases are locally Rn, you extend that locally to Cn, and then you just have to make sure that everything patches together to give you something well-defined, okay? So it's a tedious result, but not, 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 not deep, is what I mean to say. you complexify. Right? So M bar is a complexification, definitely not unique. All right. um, uh, so let me say what I mean by totally real. So M bar is, um, <clears throat> is a holomorphic manifold, so therefore as a, it, it's also a real manifold, okay? and as a real manifold it has um, a, a complex structure. As a real manifold, it has a 1 1 tensor field, J. Okay. All right, so J stands really for uh, multiplication by um, I. Okay, and so J, um, uh, and because M, it's not so important for this definition, but I'll say it just for completeness. Uh, it has, it's more than just a one, uh, so, so it satisfies two condition. Satisfying, okay. Um, so that's multiplication by um, square root of minus one has that property, okay. Um, and the other condition is that it's nine house tensor vanishes. So that's an integrability condition, okay? So the, this is like a linear condition, okay? And this is a, um, a condition that says that that linear condition um, uh, can be done locally in a, in, a, in a coordinate chart, okay? All right, so the equivalence of this thing being a holomorphic manifold to the integrability condition of the nine house tensor, that's a difficult result of um, Nylander and uh, Nuremberg and Nyland, Newlander and Nuremberg um, in late 50s. Okay. All right. So we have a, a, a oh, so I'm, I'm saying what totally real name, Sorry. Um, so um, uh, a submanifold S of this holomorphic manifold is totally real. If uh, J of tangent spaces to S intersected with themselves, zero. Okay, so when you apply J, it pushes you out into uh, uh, into a complement of the tangent space. Okay. All right. So um, so we complexify our real analytic manifold to a holomorphic manifold M bar. And so again, you can just think locally that you take a, uh, a real analytic chart for M and you build uh, in a, just by um, normal uh, complex extension um, a holomorphic manifold. Right. Okay, so that's the first step, is this uh, complexification. <laughs> So, 
Okay, so if we have a, um, a real analytic mapping between two real analytic manifolds. Okay, so I will fix now a, 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 a holomorphic extension M bar. Okay, so once and for all, I'll fix one of those. All right. <clears throat> All right, so if you have a real analytic mapping, there's a neighborhood U in the complexification of M. All right, so you surround M inside M bar uh, with a neighborhood, uh, a complex neighborhood U. So you can complexify mappings. Right? Oh, just thanks to that bar. Okay. All right. And how do you do this? Uh, so again, this is not a deep result. Uh, just like the existence of the holomorphic extension is not a deep result, and basically you do it kind of the same way. Um, uh, locally, uh, you just take the real Taylor series, and you just replace the real coefficients with complex coefficients. And that defines you uh, a holomorphic mapping in some neighborhood of every point, and then you patch it all together. Right? So there's that. <clears throat> okay, so now. I'm going to take an arbitrary subset A of M, uh, of M, yes of M, okay? Right, so let this is going to be the neighborhoods of A in um, M bar. are in the complex manifold, right? So this is a directed set by inclusion. Okay, and so I'll say the two neighborhoods, U1, uh, U, U1 is less than U2, yeah, uh, so U2 is contained in U1. Okay, so if the neighborhood gets smaller, that's, that's larger. All right. Choose some neighborhood U in N bar. I'll write that. Okay. And I'm going to uh, do that. All right. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is going to be holomorphic mappings on. U, okay, uh, which restrict to uh, real mappings on M. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, okay, so if I take a bar, so I'll generally try to write things with bar over them to mean that they're um, complexified things. That's right. Okay. Then, um, um, 
TZ. All right, so I'm going to take this mapping phi bar, and I'm now going to regard it as just a mapping of real manifolds. And so T means the derivative of that in the real sense. Okay, so I'm going to take that mapping and I'm going to differentiate it at Z, and I'm going to apply it to the tangent space uh, at M. All right, so Z is now going to be a point in M, not M bar, but M. Okay, and this is in uh, uh, T, T, Z, um, uh, N, okay? And this is going to be true for Z, N, N. Okay? So that's the realness of that mapping. So it maps the real tangent spaces to real tangent spaces, okay? So holomorphic mappings with that property. So the way to think of these is these are complexifications of real analytic mappings from you know, neighborhoods uh, of in, in M. Okay, so, and I think I want, uh, I do want to put bars on all of these because these are neighborhoods in M bar, so I want to emphasize that. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so I take a mapping uh, which is real analytic from um, some neighborhood in M into N, okay. Um, uh, and you know these guys have to be complexifications of mappings like that. Does that make sense? Okay. So then, um, okay. So then, okay. So I want to apply this construction um, in two cases of. Oh, sorry. I want I want the notation first. Okay. Um, so then. Uh, Note by um, uh, uh, how do I do this? I do this. That's not a normal C. That's not that C. That's a script C. Okay. So this is going to be C all uh, R. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, M. Uh, let's see, so I think I, I want to do it like, um, I do it like this. Okay, that's I think the way I choose that notation, I don't remember my own notation perfectly. So this is going to be, um, So I so here's what I do, right? So I fix a neighborhood u bar in N sub a. Okay, um, uh, this defines this space, nice space of holomorphic functions. This has a nice topology, namely the C hall, the compact open topology that we defined for holomorphic functions. Okay, now this is. Um, what you do here is you're taking the direct limit over this directed set. So what this means, okay, so let me maybe be explicit about that. Because we're going to see this construction a lot, so I think I should explain it as perfectly as I can. I'm going to take a mapping like this in some U1 bar, and another mapping like this in some U2 bar. Okay, so both U1 bar and U2 bar are in N, N sub A and bar sub A. Okay, and I'll say that these are equivalent. If there exists some U bar, a neighborhood of A contained in both U1 and U2 bar, okay. 
Okay. And P1 and P2 bar agree on U bar. So, um, and then by the direct limit, what I mean is you take the set of all equivalence classes. Okay, so as a set, this is the set of all equivalence classes. Okay. This is the direct limit, and this is really. Uh, kind of the direct limit in the category of sets, and we'll put a topology on here as well. Um, okay, so this sentence here, starting with explicitly and ending here, is really just the explicit characterization of those words in the category of sets. Okay. Um, all right, so the topology of C all R M N A. Okay, is defined is the final topology defined by the inclusions. Okay, so I have an inclusion of each of these into here by just its equivalence class, right? Okay, so I have um, R U bar. Okay, so this is going to be a mapping from C all R uh, U bar M bar into C all R A. Okay, so it's going to take a mapping B bar. Send it to its equivalence class, and maybe I'll put an A on there to know what the set is. Okay. All right. Okay, so that gives uh, for every set A, that gives uh, a topology to this. So this is you would you call this uh, so C uh, Hall R M N A is the space. Germs of, um, of real holomorphic mappings. Okay, so real means you know um, that property. Time flies when you're talking about analytic functions. Um, okay, so we uh, will quit there uh, because what we're going to do next time uh, is we're going to explicitly write this construction in two different cases. One being where uh, A is the entire manifold, and the other being where A is a compact subset. Uh, of, of M, um, and we'll kind of define two different topologies for the real and uh, space of uh, real analytic mappings from M to N, um, and uh, I conjecture that it's not known that those are, are equivalent. It's known in some cases. Okay, so that's where we'll go next time.